Okay, that's the dog. I admit up front, this is like a podcast entry. It's chapter 25 or chapter 24. It could be chapter 23, 23, 24, 25. No one, mad. that doesn't matter to anybody. And no one's listening. No one cares. So it doesn't even matter. But it's a podcast, more of a podcast feel because it's just trying to capture, uh, you know. As a dog, I don't even really want to do this kind of shit, you know. I, I just, I'm feeling lonely and... I, you know, the only person I could talk to is the man, and I haven't even been talking to him, but finally started warming up to him because I'm like, I have no one else to talk to. I was hoping the Colin Kaepernick, you know, controversy would lead to a little bit more uh, fun conversation. Maybe I could watch Fox News and they'd be babbling on incoherently and racistly about Colin Kaepernick with dog whistle racism. That would be fun. You watch a little dog whistle or racism, maybe, you know. Maybe some blatant racism. You could flip over to CNN and you might, you know, enjoy a little middle of the road kind of approach to Colin Kaepernick. It's a little bit on the Colin Kaepernick side. A lot of good conversation, everybody talking. It'd be fun. Or you could go over to NBC, MSNBC. You could have a little bit of, you know, bleeding hard liberal Colin Kaepernick and everybody be loving him to show him the big giant afro and his t shirt that says, you know, go to hell, everybody. I'm a kneeling. You know, and it's like, okay, you can kneel. It's fine. You know, Anthony Davis wore a T-shirt that said, okay, that's all folks. So that would seem more embarrassing and more, you know, because Colin said, I want to kneel. You know, some everybody should let him kneel. It's okay. He doesn't have to worry. Nobody should have to worry. He's trying to just make a point. It's a good point. You know, should try to have a little bit safer for everybody. It'll be better that way for everybody. It was a little bit safer. For everyone, it would be, you know, for everybody, everybody, even the police would like it. It feels a little bit safer, a little bit, you know, less hostile. It'd be better that way for everybody. But as a dog, the main thing I was just trying to say, I wasn't really trying to, you know, rem- check around talking about Colin Kaepernick. I didn't even want to talk about anything. I'm just so lonely because the uh, only thing I could, you know, the Colin Kaepernick thing didn't really generate that much. I thought it was going to generate a lot of good, fun conversation, but it, it, it didn't seem to generate that much. So then I thought, well, all right, then I guess we got to go to Tiger Woods. We're going to just try to watch a little Tiger Woods situation, and that would be good for everybody. And as a dog, I was thinking, you know, you know, I would try to piggyback on that golf, but there's, even though I'm a dog who runs on the golf course, I love running on the golf course, you know, it, to me, I just don't know how to make the bridge, you know, from my own in, innate goofball ramblings to Tiger Woods. And it just seems a little bit too commercial. Well, it's like a podcast or a chapter or a novelette. It could be everything. Nobody was wondering. Nobody really cared. But as a dog who could verbalize and say the things that was on his mind, I really was having trouble getting off on Colin Kaepernick. I just wanted to stay with Colin, you know. And I want to see. I want to see this guy. But whatever, I had to switch over to Tiger Woods because Tiger Woods was the person making the headline news. And I was hoping I could find some conversation that I would turn on ESPN, perhaps, or I could turn on something, and I would see some Tiger Woods. And I did get a lot of Tiger Woods. And I even went over, I started to watch the Masters, and I kind of had to belly up, I had to warm up to the man. And I, we even spoke a little bit, me and the man, we said, hey, what are you doing? I said to him, you're going to watch the Masters today? And he said, yeah, I just my dog, my friend. Wait, you want to watch the Masters? I said, yeah, I do. As you know, I, I want to watch the Masters because I want to follow or watch Tiger Woods. You know, and, I, and I'm trying to get off the Colin Kaepernick because I just I'm, I can't stop thinking about Colin Kaepernick and the whole thing, you know, because whatever. It's just so complicated. It's so emotional. And so the man said, hey, listen, dog, if you're stuck on the Colin Kaepernick thing, that's old news. Today's Tiger Woods. But if you're stuck, let me show you this picture. And he brought a picture of it to me. He showed it to me. And it's a picture of Magic Johnson with his big, ginormous, beautiful son, Magic Johnson, the second Magic Johnson, the second, who is gay. And it come out as gay, and I thought, as a dog, you know, I'm my, my friend, my, we, we're like more, much more closer to the animals. When you're a dog, you're already an animal. You're closer to the whole animal thing, the prehistoric or the old school, the canine from the old days where we would fight among ourselves. We weren't neutering or castrating ourselves in those days. We didn't get castrated or spayed in those days. We fought like, you know, we fought it out in, in, the, in the pits, in the mosh pits, we fought it out. But, you know, the thing is, we're, we're more, you know, we're, 
were much nicer. But back in those days, like if you had a gay son, you're like, hey, son, how, what do you got to do? Son, if you had a gay son, this is how bad it was when you were a dog. In the old, old days, you'd say, son, eh, you either start looking at the girls or we're going to all eat you. We're going to chew you up. It's going to be horrible. I'm going to be broken heart as I re- I'm going to try. Son, if you give him, do me one favor, son. If we have to tear into you and kill you and eat you, would you kind of try to turn your back straps? I want to get the tender veal. I, I'm too old now. I never get the tender veal when we kill an antelope or a deer or a white-tailed buck. I don't get the back straps. But if you, my friend, my son, if we wind up having to kill you because you're homosexual and you can't produce no offspring, I try to turn to get the back straps so I can have some back strap. That would be good because uh, I'd get a little back strap then. You know, because I don't get it too much. I'm too old right now. And that was how they did it in the old days. The dog pride, if you had a homosexual man, he would say, son, you have to, you have to appropriate it. Hey, hold your nose and go procreate or, you know, you know something. We're going to eat you. It's going to come down to this. We basically, we're eating everybody who's not good. If you can't make more of us or protect us or do better for us, we're going to have to eat you. you. Stay away from us or you will get eaten. But that's not how it is today for the dogs, because the dogs are way in front of everybody with the transgender and the neuter and the spade. You can sniff this, you can sniff that, you can do whatever you want to do. When you have no testicles or you've been, had your uh, uteraries or whatever they call them, the body of the female, the uteraries, they cut them, they snip them, they can't produce the offspring. Nobody can pro- procreate. So today it's like we're very much more liberal. But in the old days, we would eat them. It's like, eh, you know, you're too old to hunt, you're too old to wild, you can't do nothing, you better watch the babies, watch the little puppies. We better. Mind the puppy, so we're going to eat you. Grandma, Grandpa, we're going to eat you. Grandma, let me tell you something. I've seen you. You just got gums. You don't even got no teeth left. You, can't, you better watch the babies. Then after the baby season, you better run. You better get up in the hills and go. Get around a spring or eat some chipmunks or some berries because Grandma and Grandpa, we're going to eat you because I don't think you're going to even watch the babies the following year. It's like a winter. We're not putting up with you for the winter. We're going to eat you. And that's how they would do with the homosexuals. You know, as a dog in my life that's how it was but the thing we wanted to do was you know draw a comparison between the dog thing and the man he was saying to me you know if you want to get off colin kaepernick look at this picture of magic johnson's son magic johnson the second and there was a twinge of homosexual or transgender uh confusion in the man's voice because when he looked at when he looked at the picture couldn't tell if he was trying to be a homosexual or he's trying to be a transgender or a homosexual who would soon trans trans over to a transgender or he could just stay the way he was you know he's a good looking guy you know i mean i wish he was a heterosexual he'd probably become the next casanova he's like handsome beyond belief and he's got the magic johnson charisma and the charm you know but that's the man. He was trying to throw me off. He's like, oh, I was like, you're right. You know what? I'm not even thinking about Colin Kaepernick. I'm like, wow, Magic Johnson's son is really attractive. I mean, and that's what I said as a dog because I'm neutered. I don't even have, you know, it could be transgender or anything for me because I have no hormones reaching my brain anymore because I chopped them off. They chopped off my balls. So it's, I'm not worrying about, you know. But I did say, oh, it's pretty amazing because Magic Johnson's son is pretty good looking. But then they said, finally the man said, Look at this thing, this master's thing. And they started to watch Tiger Woods and they enjoyed the whole Tiger Woods. Well, Tiger Woods like like a big, beefy, like, a, you know, the old school from the old days. Big, like, uh, the guy with the sword, the power of uh, something, he said. And the other guy was the Grace Skull. By the power of Grace Skull or something, by the power of something, he said, I am. And he would become, you know, much more muscular and robust. He had sinuous shoulders and giant, you know. There's a big gap between his ribs and his lat- latissimos, his lats and his ribs and his big beefy, you know, biceps and his triceps and his forearms. There's a big gap like he's carrying, you know, in the old days, the white people said among themselves, like he's carrying two watermelons. It wasn't a thing. It was not a res- racial thing. Tiger Woods looked like he was carrying two watermelons, like his big giant beefy lats were pushing out his big, you know, s- gorgeous, you know, He-Man. That's what it was. It was He-Man. And something to do with the war of something or the war of the world. So it was He-Man. I am Iron Man. I am He-Man. I am not Iron Man. It was I am Grayskull. I am Lionel. It was something to do with something. He had a sword. Became very strong. And that was Tiger. Tiger came walking back from the 18th grade. I was like, my goodness. Tiger, the PJ must have allowed you to get on some steroids. And to get beefed up after your latest car wreck. You know? And I said, Tiger, you know, maybe you should help out. If the... PGA, as a dog, I'm just saying, as, a P- as I'm saying, I'm a dog, and I'm just saying the PGA, if 
you got to allow Tiger Woods to obviously beef up on the steroids and get some kind of genetic, you know, weirdo kind of gene therapy of some kind of weird situation where they're harvesting some kind of nanonite cells and they're getting Tiger, you know, beefed up. They're ready to rock and roll. They're ready to do the thing like the old days where the people could get in a car wreck, they didn't wear seatbelts, they got ejected, they were crushed, their skulls were smashed, and then like the next year they were back in the PGA, like Tiger. Tiger's doing a big smash and a crash and a thing, and he's destroyed, and like a year later, like, oh, there's Tiger, he looks like, you know, Lionel. He looks like the guy from Skull. And the thing that I was just saying as a dog, and I was admiring about Tiger, I was like, it has to be that they're letting him do a few steroids and they're giving him some gene therapy. But shouldn't they let Phil Nicholson come back just because he's a degenerate gambler? You know, and a sick, weird, perverted, degenerate gambler who wants to go big belly up to, you know, Phil's like this. Hey, Phil says, Donald, Donald Trump, the president, can go hang out with these guys and love them and say it's so good. And you kill a journalist on American soil or American journalist, whatever. Hey, come on. So Phil's like, come on, I, they're killers to whatever. He's trying to get out in the open. They're killers. But I just, you know, I'm like, hey, if Donald Trump says it's okay, it's okay. I go over there, Saudi Arabia, make a lot of money. Donald's like, hey, you know, hey, Bush said it, Obama said it. Everybody's like, you got the oil. So whatever you're doing, you kill a journalist every once in a while, it's okay. You want to put the women in some kind of a shoebox and you say you can't drive a car or you can't vote or whatever. Hey, come on, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. You got the oil. And so... You know, but Donald's like, hey, he, Donald's like, it wasn't even the oil. He's like, I just love authority, authoritarianism. I just love it when you got the dictators, you know, killing people for their, I wish I could kill people so badly. You don't believe it. Believe me, I wish I could kill people. You know, if only I could kill some people, that would be wonderful. If I could kill some people like Saudi Arabia or like Putin, I could kill somebody like North Koreans, I would love it. But, you know, then so Phil comes along, he's like, hey, listen to Donald over here. He's crazy. Donald's nuts. Come on, I can just belly up to the Saudi Arabians and get some, you know, a billion dollars. And Phil, let me say this much, as a dog, as a stupid dog, and we're done with Tiger. We've moved off Colin, we did Magic Johnson, we're here, we want to stick with Tiger, but I'm going to finish with Phil. Phil, take the money and run, you fool. Get a billion and a half. Get a billion and a half, Phil, and go become the next Saudi Arabian, you know, I don't know what you would call it, like uh, Joe DiMaggio, or number 42, the guy who broke the color barrier, maybe you can break the sanity barrier or the, uh, I don't know what it is kind of barrier. I'm not trying to pick a fight. I don't want to get killed. Believe me, I'm just a dog. I don't have that many more years to go. I got a, I got a lot less years than you. Subtract all the years you have. That's how many I have. It's not that good, Phil. So I'm not trying to pick a fight with Saudi Arabians. But, you know, take the money and run, Phil. Get the billion and a half and go become the next, um, the next what do you call it, the next Tiger Woods of Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I don't know if you would say that. Maybe you say they're going to become the next, uh, you know, Michael Jordan of Saudi Arabia. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't could, whatever you could do. Maybe you could be the next, you know, the boxer, the boxer who can make a million dollars every time he knocks somebody out. Maybe that could be you, Phil. But if, this is what I would do. Victor Hovland at 10.